Um, but something that I do know, absolutely know without a doubt, is that the convention season is starting to come back, which is really cool. I'm going to Florida for the first one, which is <laughs> as far as the reason why the convention scene has ceased happening for a couple years. There's like no mandates over there. Oh, <laughs> there's no, I'm like, but you have to wear masks. Do you have to show vaccine proof or anything? Like, no, you're good to go. It's Florida, baby. You don't even need a shirt. You know, just come on in. You know, I, I don't actually know. I don't know what's going on, but I do know that it's like the restrictions are really low. So I'm going to be wearing a mask. I'm going to be like doing elbow bumps, but I'm going to MegaCon this week. I'll be there on Thursday. And with the convention scene rapidly appro- approaching, I thought, hey, no better time than to give you some tips on the hunt. Specifically, some affordable tips by one of the most utilized applications of the entire team. And I'm talking Russ, the comic sensei, you know, LCS owner. I am talking about myself just for like, just chilling and I want to do stuff. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to learn about funny books. We're talking Key Collector Comics. Um, Key Collector Comics is available for both Androids and iPhones. Use Kotam 101 to unlock a free two-week subscription of the app. But um, the reason why it costs money is because there are a few categories that get updated every single week on a timeline that's built especially so that the members can get ahead of the curve on spec, investing, um, just you know, information that is, if you are following it and you are hunting for it, you're in kind of like a special club because you have access to inv- to uh, to um, data that could get you ahead of a curve to give you valuable comics to work with or to be able to sell and make money off of. Thus, it's a subscription. However, 98% of the app, if not more, is free. There are so many categories on there. Comic books are uploaded to the app with specific um, qualifications so that the ones that are listed are only the ones you should that, that are like worth knowing about as it pertains to collectability and worth. They have to be selling at a certain rate. They have to be valuable to a certain amount. There have to be some type of level of significance that puts them on the app. So if you're searching for action comics because you're looking at a run of action comics, you don't want to be hit with every single issue. You're going to be scrolling all day long and most of these books are $5. And you're looking for the books that are worth more than that when you're on the hunt. You're on your knees, you're underneath tables, you're you're going through long boxes, dollar bins, right? Well, the app will actually n- omit the comics that are not keys, that are not valuable enough, and they'll highlight the one that you should care about. And that way, if you're going through a run, you're doing some hunting at a convention, you can skip the ones that you don't need because if you do need them, it's probably because you're trying to fill a run. I was going to say, unless you're like me and you're trying to get every Green Lantern comic ever, well, you won't, mm, yeah. But if that's the case, the app is going to be for you as well because you can catalog what books you own. Thus, you can keep track of what you should hunt for. So whether you're collecting or trying to just keep track of your own collection, get suggested pricing, get approximate collection value because if you upload your collection to the app, there's a proximate value that, you know, it's a scale, but it'll give you kind of an idea of what you have. Well, there's a category on there that we got to talk about. And it's called $10 keys. I pulled books that I think are so worth 10 bucks that if they're high grade enough, you should grab them no matter what. And I pulled books that I know that I have hunted for that I always look for at cons. And when the convention season is so close, no better time to go through them. So I'm trying to give you some advice here and tell you about what goes through my noggin when I'm hunting. Number 10 on our list is, oh my gosh, what's this? Rob Liefeld? Young blood? Issue number two, first appearance of profit. Yes, $10 average sales on this book. And in March, this was hitting at a 9.8, about 200 bucks. Lows over this last month at a 9.8, $86. That's a big drop. However, in May 2020, we found out that there was a writer attached to develop a TV show for Youngblood. Excuse me, for profit. October 2021, that information, gone. Forget about it. We're getting a movie. Jake Gyllenhaal to star as John Prophet. Prophet apparently is coming to the big screen. This is a $10 book. It's still a book you can find on the cheap. Go for high-grade copies. This is definitely not a book that I recommend you going 
straight 9.8. Unless you can get it for around 80 bucks right now, because again, it has hit heights of 200 bones. All right, there's also a variant copy of this. It has a pink title. Um, this one right here is a book that Rob Liefeld has gone on record to say that is essentially the same print count. So it sells for the same amount. Don't get confused and think that because it's a variant that you should pay more money for it. Pay the same amount. If anything, buy the cover that you like more. Doesn't really matter as it pertains to spec, in my opinion. Ryan, you love young blood. You love yeah, Rob. You love so Rob Liefeld. Looking at these images give, produces a undesirable reaction inside of me. But it's also because I was not a child in the '90s collecting comics back when these were, you know, the hottest things in the world. So, in retrospect, I can look back on them and feel gross. West Coast Avengers number one, 1984. This is number nine on the list. We had the first team appearance and origin of the West Coast Avengers: Hawkeye, Iron Man. Um, which is uh, the Rhodes Iron Man, Wonder Man, Mockingbird, and Tigra. So um, we actually had Reggie Collects, shout out Reggie, on the most recent trending video because he actually talked about Wonder Man being a great spec, specifically his first solo title, which you can also get for around 10 bucks and find in the dollar bin. It got us talking about West Coast Avengers 1. I remember talking to him on the phone and him being like, look at this, you can get, he just started listing off all the heroes that are in the MC that have been West coast Avengers. Then we got to talking about, um, we got to talking about Kate Bishop in the Hawkeye series, the hideout that her aunt's hideout was the person who provided the, like the, the hideout for the West coast Avengers in the run. And then we're talking about she Hulk and how there's immortal man spec happening. By the way, have you seen what immortal man's going for at a 9.8? It's astounding because there's rumors that immortal man may, may be in she Hulk. And then we're talking about moon Knight, Who's also been a West coast Avenger. And then we're talking about mockingbird spec. I mean, it just keeps on happening where we point towards West coast Avengers. And this is a book that is out there that you may be able to secure for cheap. And a lot of people aren't watching them, is but this Rom? is on the cover, the robot down yeah. there by the A. That's Rom, yeah. Weird. We go. Okay. Next on our list Old at school. number eight, nice. Swamp Thing number sixty-seven from nineteen eighty-seven. Ten dollar average sales. This right here is a book that goes missed a lot because people are specifically dealers. If it doesn't have, if it's not like that key appearance, if it's not early Swamp Thing, a lot of these books only go for like five bucks. What's notable about this one, Ryan? It's the first, uh, it's the six page preview. That's right. Of Hellblazer. Hellblazer one, first solo title. Um, between all the Constantine hype, I, I don't know, man. We just got done talking about Green Hell. We did. That's like the, thing the, and the, Constantine. One of the big, like, I would say, it's not really a, it's not really a twist, but really one of the coolest parts of that it's book. It's a surprise is, reveal. Yeah. I don't know if it's a twist technically, but it was a cool reveal at the end. Yeah, a cool reveal is Constantine's part of it. And that's basically how it goes in DC Comics. Oh, snap, we got Constantine. It's a good day, right? And we have HBO Max that's bringing over um, supposedly strange adventures. There's a good chance that we may, that Green Lanterns are happening on HBO Max. They're definitely expanding. Better be. The... Um, more of the mature content, which really DC has found their stride in clearly. So hopefully they go all in, which means more Swamp Thing and more Constantine. 10 bucks for a preview appearance that people just don't have this cover in their brain when they're hunting. This is a book. If you find it for under 10 bucks or if you find it high grade for 10, you are going to be happy you did. Next on the list, Batman 657, second first Second full and first cover appearance of Damian friggin' Wayne. 2006, this is when it came out. A polarizing character, but a popular character nonetheless. My favorite Robin. Damian is your favorite Robin? That's probably just because I like modern stuff the most. Yeah. The kid's got spunk. That's one word for it. Right? What other he's words a, would you describe Damian as? Uh, shithead? Yeah, he's an example of a shithead. That's sure. <laughs> he's a little... <laughs> he's definitely... He's a brat. He's a brat, but I like yeah. Robin as a brat. Right. It makes it makes his, uh, when you pair him up with Batman, it makes him a little more interesting to read. That's right. So this right here is just another one that I think is just a cool book, but you should know it. It doesn't have any other significance besides that. 
second full appearance, but also first cover appearance. But I think that this is one that people are going to probably underestimate long term. I think Damien's going to have a great long term history. There's not a whole lot of next gen characters in the DC lore that seems to be. I mean, really, can you think of any that are really being focused on right now? Apart from like, I mean, you got son of Kal-El. Yeah, Superman's son is now Superman. I'm talking about in the movies. Oh God, no. you have a, you have Young Avengers everything right now at Marvel. What's sure. DC got? Well, we may get movie Teen wise, Titans like, yeah. eventually. Maybe you know we got the show, I guess the Titans show. But that's pretty much it, and that's not really setting up a, a, a universe. That's or, in its own thing. You know what I'm saying? Next one on this list. All right, we're getting into it. We it's been long overdue. I got to tell you guys to know your firestorm. Firestorm, the nuclear man. Comic fam, you got to know your damn firestorm before you go hunting. I remember there was a time when you wanted to uh, make like a fire guy shirt or and I use, something. Yeah, you use the firestorm. With the logo graphic. or the trade dress or something like that. You're hard to make happy. but The it fury of fire weird. guy. Yeah, that's right. That's the nuclear man. <laughs> so here's the thing about firestorm, the nuclear man. Do I care for the comics? Not so much. I personally have never felt a great desire to read this character. No one really does. There's, there's a reason why this is a run that constantly introduced villains. Because it was kind of, it just didn't do well. They were trying to like spice it up all the damn time. But what happened with Firestorm between the years, what was it, 1983 and 1985? Firestorm featured brand new villains. So many villains that you'll recognize came out of this run. There are few comic book runs from DC and Marvel both that are as like not popular, like, the, like, like, like Firestorm is, that have as many keys in the run as they do. You got to know your Firestorm comics. Not because of Firestorm, but because of the keys that are within it. So between, I mean, we're at like number six on the list. Spoiler, I'm going to hit you with a lot more comics than that. So hit the like button, slap the subscribe button. I'm going to take you through just a handful of Firestorm keys. Go to Key Collector, pull up the um, title search and just type in Firestorm and you'll pull up all the Firestorm comics. There's two different volumes. Go through them. You need to know them. Here is a taste. Firestorm the Nuclear Man 35 is the, is definitely not the book I wanted to talk about first. So <laughs> this right here is the first appearance of Weasel. It's from the second run. Weasel was portrayed by James Gunn's brother in the Suicide Squad, the second rendition of the Suicide Squad movie. Sean Gunn, I believe, the guy who does the CGI Correct. mocap work for Rocket Raccoon. That's right. All right, but let's um let's back it up a little bit here because I, I got ahead of myself. So that one right there was that. So let's go to six. Yeah, let's go to six. Here we go. This was actually the first one I want to tell you about. So this is uh, Firestorm Nuclear Man issue number 28. First appearance of Slipknot, not the band. Shout out Joy Jordanson, RIP. Slipknot appeared in the 2016 Suicide Squad movie. He was the character that they used as a example to the audience what happens if you leave the group and try to run away. The bomb in your noggin will go off and Slipknot was on the screen for like under five minutes. However, this book, I have purchased double digits for 50 cents to a dollar in my life. Double digits, probably over 20 times. This is a book you just got to know. First Slipknot, it's been on the show. He's been in the movies before. He's been in like other renditions, but he's a very minor villain. But I'm just giving you a taste with this first one. Let's take a look at the next one. Ropes, a guy who knows ropes. That's such a weird. It's weird. Okay. Look at this one. Fury of the Firestorm number three. First appearance of Killer Frost. Yes. If you watch the CW Flash, you know who this is. But more importantly, Killer Frost is a character who comes in and out of DC Comics all the time. And her first appearance was in Fury of the Firestorm number three. Wow. I said early 80s. This was 1978, by the way. So um, late 70s. was this, this is from the first run. First appearance of Killer Frost. Um, the I'm second just a sucker run. for ice powers in general, too. So, right. Killer Frost is, is my jam. Firestorm number one from the second run, starting in 1982. First appearance of Black Bison. First appearance of the uh, of Lorraine Riley, who becomes Firehawk. This is another book that you can find on the cheap that in high grade. 
because of the white um, border plus light blue cover is very difficult to secure in high grade. Members are willing to pay upwards of 15 to 20 bucks for a book that's not worth it just to know that they have a high grade copy. Keep an eye out for Fury of the Firestorm issue number one. Also issue number six. This is a fun one. A lot of people don't know about this, but Masters of the Universe number one, there was a 14-page preview. That's a lot. That's like a whole issue almost. Yeah, it's like seven pages front and back. Of Damn. In 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 Firestorm, the Nuclear Man number six, the second volume, right? There is a 14-page preview of Masters of the Universe. There are 16 individual issues that got this preview between July and August 1982. This was one of those issues. Five, but the, and look at this here. Five issues were the first to have the preview. Um, Firestorm 6, this was one of them. DC Comics Presents 51, um, Justice League of America 208, Wonder Woman 297. Um, So you can actually find multiple issues and complete a run of this, but it's a $5 book. If you look at this book, you are not, if you don't know it off the cuff, you are not going to know that it has the Masters of the Universe preview on the inside. Let's keep it going. Because Plastique's first appearance happened in Firestorm, the Nuclear Man number seven in 1982. Like, are you counting how many first appearances are in this run that no one cares about and no one knows? Let's keep it going. Average sales right now for a high value copy or a high grade copy, $3. However, in higher grade, people will be willing to pay 15 to 20 plus, plus all day long. Keeping it That's going. That's got to be a bad sign, man. If your comic is just not doing good, like let's throw a new villain. Let's throw a new villain. Come on, guys. A new villain. A new villain. Please and, buy our book. And they did it so many times that other writers would source villains from this run. And then they did it so good that all of a sudden plastique matters. Sure. Killer Frost, Killer Frost matters. matters. But then it didn't matter. And there's more. Let's keep it going. Firestorm, the Nuclear Man 21. This is the death of the first Killer Frost. First appearance of the second Killer Frost. Another $4 issue. So more Killer Frost. <clears throat> this next one, I think a lot of members are going to like. First appearance of Felicity from um, the Arrowverse. Felicity Smoke. Smoke. Thank you. Felicity Smock. I thought it was, yeah, Smoke. Yeah? It looks like Smock, but yeah, it's Smoke. Uh, I thought it was Smock. Felicity Smock, but maybe it's Felicity Smoke. Mm. Felicity Smoke from, um, from the Flash from, series. From Felicity. She was an Arrow. Oh, that's right. She was an Arrow character. Um, was she? Yep. Or I thought she was. No, you're right. She might have been in both. I mean, she was in both, but she was an Arrow character. Thank you. Completely different Big type of character her, from though. the comics. I know she's a gorgeous mm. and a character. She's like a fan favorite from that whole series. This is her first appearance. She was a random character that was introduced in issue 23. Average sales reflect that because she was a fan favorite. Fifteen dollar average sales. First appearance of Felicity. Didn't stop there. Debut of Blue Beetle in a 16, excuse me, Blue Beetle. <laughs> rewind. I need a rewind Different button. Blue guy. Blue Devil, who was a Swamp Thing spec when the show was actually happening. There's a 16 page promotional issue in Firestorm the Nuclear Man, issue number 24. This book hit heights of like 20 to 40 bucks at one point because of the Swamp Thing show. This right here is a tough book. It's thicker because of this extra 16 page original story. It makes it really tough to secure in high grade. And yeah, there's like an origin, the first appearance of Bug and other things. But the main thing is Blue Devil first appears in issue 24. Wow. Ryan, we're ending with Weasel. I, I spoiled it already, but Firestorm the Nuclear Man 35, first appearance of gotcha. Weasel. How It's like sometimes runs have one, two, or maybe even three key books. I'm talking like there are runs with like 60 comics in it. And there is one book that's a minor key of a character who dies. And it's a $3 book. Like, go on Key Collector. You can find these books. I'm thinking like, what, like like Swamp Thing, right? The, the Constantine key is like the big one. Yeah, yeah. Right? Justice League Dark a little bit. But like, okay. first issue. But like, yeah, yeah. Who, Alan Moore first, you know, like this right a here. A couple. Yeah. But it's like under 10, right? Under 15. These aren't only, these aren't the only Firestorm issues that you gotta know, comic fam. Keep up on your Firestorm. Know your Firestorm keys. It's going to make you dangerous on the hunt. 
I always check the Firestorm section at conventions for this reason, and I have for over 10 years. Sometimes I call him Danger Tom because he's so dangerous on the hunt. That's very, very true. 